In light of the astonishing revelations uh, made about Indigenous violence against women and children at the National Press Club lunch the other, uh, last week and the culture of silence and political correctness that makes us tiptoe around Indigenous sensitivities, are we facing an intractable problem? And what is the chance of reconciliation if the issue, these issues are not addressed and solved? Nikita, we'll start with you. OK, let me just clarify a few things. This isn't an issue about Indigenous sensitivity. This isn't an issue about political correctness. It's an issue about the epidemic of domestic, domestic violence that we have within this country and the astonishing numbers that we have within it within the Aboriginal community. That is exclusive to reconciliation. Let's not confuse Aboriginal quality with reconciliation, because reconciliation is a political agenda. Uh, I think that Marsha Langton, Jacinta Price and Josephine Cashman uh, making this uh, national call to action uh, was was very brave. There is an epidemic. However, this is a massively complicated issue and it requires nuance and speci specificity. Sorry, I had a lisp when I was growing up. <laughs> uh, because we're talking about families. We're talking about individuals. And what we need to be very wary of is making uh, claims with big, broad brushstrokes such as Indigenous sensitivity, political correctness, or blaming or making this to be a racial issue because it doesn't just affect race or affect a cultural group. This is across the country we have this epidemic, but we're also talking about families. And this changes greatly between uh, remote, rural and urban. Jacinta Price, Josephine Cashman and Marsha Langton all come from different areas and have different experiences from me. I'm from Mount Druitt, which is an urban Aboriginal community, so I can only talk about my own experience. Um, can, I, can I just interrupt you there? Do you bring your own personal experience to bear when you think about this issue, this when you sit, try and work out what to do about it? Sorry, Tony, for interrupting. I'm misinterrupted tonight. <laughs> uh, this topic is very very dear to me and the reason I say that we should not talk in big brushstrokes is that when we start demonising Aboriginal men what we're also de doing is demonising Aboriginal women and when we're saying that domestic violence and perpetrating that is inherent to Aboriginal men we're saying being victims is inherent to Aboriginal women and I didn't realise this stigma until I was a victim of domestic violence myself. And my mother was a survivor of domestic violence. She was very open about it with me. Uh, she worked in the Aboriginal community with women who were victims of domestic violence. Um, and it wasn't until I remember very, very vividly standing in front of the police with my busted lip at, at the house I was at with my partner at the time and just thinking to myself, you stupid Aboriginal girl. You were so disappointing and you're disappointing to your community. And in that moment, I thought it was as if me being a victim of domestic violence was inherent to who I was as a person. So that's the reason why I say we need to not paint broad brushstrokes. Why did you blame yourself, by the way? Because I think when we, we victim blame within this country, we make so many excuses for the perpetrators. And this is what I agree with. Perpetrators need to take responsibility. Perpetrators do need to be punished. Yes, punitive punishment may not always you know, it's what we're using now and does it work? That's a big question, but we can't, we can't ignore that something needs to be done. And by the time that it gets to the court system, it's far too late for a lot of families. So for me, we quite often victim blame because we make allowances, because people allow it to happen. And the fact is this national call to action, this has been an issue within the Aboriginal community for decades. It has been violence against Aboriginal women has been happening from, well, from, from basically colonisation. Like, I know it's a very big, broad thing to say, but you're talking about vulnerable women. So I think for me, you know, growing up with this idea that, you know, because we blame Aboriginal people for their own disadvantage so often, that when you do find yourself in a situation where so many women are vulnerable, where you are the victim, you cannot help but take responsibility. And I think that happens so often in this country, is that women, especially vulnerable women who don't have historically a great relationship with the police or institutions, don't reach out to institutions, therefore our institutions aren't really equipped to handle it and therefore nothing is changing. Um, I have a lot more to say, but I just want to be very Just one more question for you. Um, you, you mentioned um, the problem of demonising Aboriginal men. Um, if they are the main perpetrators, how best uh, to engage them? Well, the thing is, is that we 
I think it will, again, each community is different. So I can't speak for rural or remote communities, but we don't know that it's like that Aboriginal men are the main perpetrators. We have non-Aboriginal men committing domestic violence against non-Aboriginal women. I think what we have to remember <laughs> is this issue does not exist within a value. I think when we value women less in our society, when we value black women less in our society, then of course that is going to come out in personal relationships. I don't have an answer. I do think, however, the cuts to our family and children's services, the massive cuts to homeless services, the fact that many women's refuge, refuges have been cut uh, throughout New South Wales does nothing to help the problem. I think cuts to frontline legal services for um, victims of domestic violence. I think there was, what was it, $35 million uh, was cut from the coalition to frontline legal services. That doesn't help. So we need to really start addressing the reasons as a culture why we allow violence towards women to happen, but also that we have the infrastructure for our vulnerable people and not to take away from that. Okay, I'm going to go to uh, Terry Butler.